Hello everyone and welcome to the long-awaited review of the BMD2M that should have been out last week, but hey, it wasn't because I'm me and I had exams. Anyway, this is a scout vehicle, but it sits on the BMD line, which means it has hydromatic suspension instead of target designation. It has a pair of heavy missiles, which deal a, quite a big chunk of damage. In fact, quite similar to the, um, just about anything else really, as you can see here, 648 to 1088. If they hit, you're screwed. Quite similar to the Weasel Hot. In fact, it might actually be the same, except for a few key differences, but we'll go into that later. It's a speedy little vehicle, but the top speed is low. It's relatively stealthy, but it's not the best in the tier. It has an auto cannon, but it's not quite as punchy as the BMP3Ms. But at the last, it is still a very fun vehicle to play. Um, this is on the BMD line of the Marachi skin line. So as you can see here, we have a spore line, a smoke grenade, improved thermal sight, AP, enhanced driver and stuff. And there's also a troop compartment, which will give better base repair and capture, but you don't need to worry about that. So the first thing you want to do is to go for your thermal sight, then smoke grenades, then the improved tracks, which will help you with your off-road speed immensely, and then you can go down the firepower line. I mean, these two aren't really particularly useful. Uh, your rate of fire with your missiles is still going to be slow regardless, and the spore liner won't really help in the grand scheme of things. So, thermal sight, smoke, tracks, everything else really. That's the very basics of, of a scout. Um, let's also compare it to other AFEs in the same tier. I'm only going for vehicles which are actually intended to be used in a spotter role, so that leaves out the Rosamac and the NM142, as the Rosamac is too big and the NM142 triggers me the moment I look at it, so I'm not even going to crate its existence. So as you can see here, the BMD-2M has quite a punchy gun here. Um, its missiles do have a penetration of 900, which is actually the same as the Weasel, and they do 648 to 1088, in fact they're basically the same as the Weasel. Um, so they hit harder than both the BMP-3 and the Ingwe, and the Warrior which has a missile very similar to the BMP-3M as well. It has very low hit points in the tier, but it's better than the VBR and the, and the Weasel. But its hull armor is pretty shit. Um, it actually has the lowest armor in the same tier, uh, along with the V-Bell Ingwe, with the Weasel's unmanned turret giving it a saving grace. If this thing gets hit with just about anything, it's gonna hurt. The camouflage is also the worst in the tier as well, 35% compared to the high 40s for the rest, and the while stock is also pretty terrible as well. However, its view range on the move is pretty decent, and its view range while stopped is pretty nice as well, so you have that going for you. The gun depression is a thing with hydromatic suspension, but when you're actually going to go hold down in this to shoot at people for an extended period of time, be real. So to start off with, at the end, your auto cannon is pretty okay, but the low damage means that at best you're going to use it for a couple of burst fire or in that panic situation where you're trying to circle someone. The missiles will be your main hit heavy hitters here with a pretty decent, a very good speed of 500 meters a second. Uh, this is compared to the BMP 3Ms of 370. Uh, the Bebel Ingway is being at 200 and the Warrior being at 200 as well. So your missiles are very quick. However, there is no depression or elevation with that missile launcher, meaning that at close ranges, and given the speed of the missile as well, if you're trying to fight up or below someone, you're going to have problems. So the missiles feel very standoffish in a way. Which is okay, I suppose. Uh, commanders wise, there is a choice of three. Um, if you want to go through the recommended line for PvP right now, which is Scout, 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 you need Erin O'Connell, as she gives everything to help you with the foliage, special agent and everything. Um, for Erin O'Connell, you should also use your paint, active thermal camera, and telescopic lenses as well. This is primarily to help you win the scouting war, and it will give you at least a fighting chance against Ingwe's, BMPs, Warriors, and Weasels. Uh, crew skill-wise, driver, ex acceleration off-road and, and overall accuracy, and loader, accuracy, decay, and module damage. The other two commanders you can take, which I do not recommend, is Sabrina, 
who will give you a mix of module damage, spotting and crew kills, however she is inferior to everyone when it comes to the scouting game, and if you want to hit people you can use Rashid, which means you will completely lose the scouting game, but at the very least your missiles will actually work to some extent. To which if you wish to go through this firepower line, um, I would definitely recommend taking control unit, gun breach, and paint. It happens really. Standard skill, stan standard um, scout skills apply, surplus park crates, first aid cabinet, fire extinguisher, and your field rebuild kit as well. It's a thing. Um, some high explosive rounds are okay, 10mm will try to go through the engine deck of MBTs but it's not really recommended to get that close. Uh, so mostly AP, 168, 168 is pretty good here and the 900 missile pen of that missile means you are going to hurt a lot of people. For instance if we look at the Challenger over here. And as you can see here, the Challenger's window is actually very penetrable to 747 there. Um, and there's also parts of the tank as well, and you can also hit that as well. Which is pretty decent if you'll ask me. Um, so the Challenger is probably the worst vehicle you go up against. It also means you'll butter the lower plate arm of the K1A1s, you'll go through Leopards. Uh, Abrams may be a slightly different story simply because it's an Abrams and the heat protection is generally pretty okay but as you can see here the 900 pen will help quite a bit. In fact it's just under that so all the other scouts in the same tier may have issues and there's always that bit of the vehicle as well. Moving on to higher tier MBTs such as the Leopard 2A4 Revo which is probably the most heavily armoured Leopard in its tier. Um, as you can see here, there's also a pretty decent chance of going through that part of the tank as well. 242-ish, go for there as well, however it is quite resistant to missiles, but the high penetration means that, well, there's always a lot of side armour to get through, but the high pen does mean you get through as well. And then lastly, vehicles such as the Merc 3 Baz, which is always a pain to go through for AFVs. Um, I believe you can actually penetrate parts of the vehicle, as you can see there, and here, and of course the side arm as well. So it's not all doom and gloom, and the high penetration at least will help with quite a lot of things compared to the Ingres 800D, as well as the BMP 3M as the missile pen of 800 and everything else. So um, functionally speaking the missiles are basically the same as the weasels except the weasels missiles can turn um, up or down well they can depress and elevate and the BMD 2Ms can't and the launcher is fixed and its missiles are also significantly faster I believe. Uh, let's quickly check 500 meters per second. Yeah they are significantly faster than the weasel. Anyway Let's have a look at some games. So the first game will be a voice recording by me, so we'll have a look at it right now. And the second game will be a recording stripped from one of my streams as it was intended to show the more firepower line of this. So the first game, more like scouting, second game, firepower. Let's have a look. So this is a Paternica match, and as you may well know, I'm actually really bad at scouting. Um, it's this is a map for very aggressive scout play, um, in all honesty. Most of the time I function more as a passive scout, so for instance on a river point I usually sit near the river or something and wait for the enemies to come up. So this was very much a match out of my comfort zone. So I'm between with Tank Sniper and Decount here, two very good friends of mine, two very good players. Um, t I believe Tank Sniper was having an orgasm at this point as he's in his challenger. Um, and the rest of the team, <laughs> the rest of the enemy team is mainly in sixes and fives, and deep count is in a Centaur 105. The reason why we took a challenger was because we needed a heavy. Due to the matchmaking and how the way platoons are now, you almost always need a heavy. So taking uh, simply a free AFEs or something would actually be eventually detrimental. 
So we have our challenger as our pushing tank. So I'm going to go here. Um, initially, I wanted to see if I can spot people coming up. I'm using active thermal camera, which means their spotting is going to be, which means their camera is going to be reduced. Okay, T90 moves up. He's probably going to come around like here, which means he'll spot me, so I'll back off. Um, the main point of this tank is the 65 km h top speed, which means it can be chased down quite a bit. And even though it has high max suspension, I barely ever see myself using it because it reduces the speed a bit. So we're going to go up here and we're going to see what's in that cap circle. I was thinking it, it was going to be a scorpion cash deck. Oh shit, there's a warrior. Uh, he misses. I, thankfully, I don't actually get hit here. Nice hit on that Magak there. Even roughly minimum damage like that is still 858. So your missiles, even one, will severely hurt people. So at some point I'm going to want to go back there again, but for now I wanted to see if that warrior was going to chase me. Um, that usually is a meta here in Paternica. If you see a scout, you need to go for it, because especially on a night map like this, um, scouts are the most dangerous things here. I am the danger, so to speak. So MBT70 over there. Um, I can't really risk firing at this point, unfortunately. And nice hit on that guy. I get spotted by the scorpion, ow, I get tracked. There is a lot of lucky shots that happen here at this point. Um, I have no idea what hit me, but hopefully we're going to hit the scorpion. Come on, no, okay. So I haven't actually been spotted at this point, which means um, there's no scouts in the center part here. So they're either going to be around clustered around those two points, which means for the moment it's very likely to just be that M60 there. And given the high damage on the missiles, um, I believe that shot was worth it. And as you can see there, I won. <laughs> yeah, getting spotted on the scout on this map can be painful, but I've gotten rid of one of their scorpions, which is good. High damage, a VBL wouldn't be able to do that and neither would anything else except maybe for, the red, for that reason. So for now, I'm going to see if I can go behind this bush. Can we? One, two, there we go. I think I am around that M60. That's okay. So even though this thing's camo is a little bit less than the other guys on the same tier, its view range is a little bit better, or at least that's the way I've got everything set up. Which means we can go pretty well. So for now, I'm going to start moving towards the upper end of the map. I want to see if I can intercept the enemy at all. Now have a bit of fun. And oh shit, there's a scorpion. Uh eh. No. And this is where things get extremely dicey. I get hit so many times and I just managed to get out of it. Yeah, the whole panic move is definitely a thing. And yeah, if I was just using a warrior or like um the BMP3, I probably might have died in that scenario, which means, like I said before, alpha damage, ability to fire two shots, seriously good. Um, now, you could possibly say that I've done, that I, that, I, that I could have done a lot more damage at this point, um, if I'd gone for those two guys, but I see that VBL is up there, so I decided to play it safe. This could have very easily been a 10k damage game. Uh, T64 over there. I'm not firing at him at this point, there's also a Stingray. I'm actually quite unsure, but I, like I say, I decided to play it safe. Spot that T64 for everybody. There we go. It's a nice little spotting damage done. There's also a Gecko over there and everything else, so I start driving towards them, see if I can spot them. Um, I could have actually gone up a lot further, and maybe I would have done the spotting damage on them, but it's okay. I do eventually make the decision to fire a missile at the smirk, but it's too late, and in the end, he does get hit. So, yeah, quite a few things could have happened. Lots of room for improvement, so to speak. So, I'm gonna move up and kill the other two. It's pretty fun. <laughs> I did. I did actually enjoy this game quite a bit. Unfortunately, there is a VBL over there. Oh god, I believe he's using the auto cannon, and I could nearly very much be team killed there. So anyway, we're, we're going to pew pew him to death. 
There you go. Game's over. Six kills. It says I've done 5,000 damage, but I did get an ammo rack on the M60, so let's see how well I did if the game decides to load, which, as you know, it does have issues doing at times. Uh, in Glops and PvE, generally speaking, it's going to be a lot more difficult um, in PvE simply because the view ranges are compressed and everything, and in Glops, the suiciding is quite a thing. But in those two game modes, you could probably get away with using Sabrina or Rashid and using the more firepower centric line. PvP, I would only recommend going Scout, as the Scout War is something you want to win. It is most definitely something. So if the game's going to load is up to it, please. If not, it happens. So after restarting the game, the came back to the results screen and it went pretty well. 6,203 enemies damage dealt. I was going to say 6,000 enemies destroyed would be a definite game that I definitely won't be posting as a review. 5 enemies spotted and 6 enemies destroyed. Quite a nice bit of spy damage done here with a grand total of 4,000. 6 kills as you can see here. Um, one, da uh, one missile, one missile. 622 done to a VBR which does through the order cannon which went very well. A uh, single missile done to these guys as well. Pretty good. Top of the team, my friend Tank Sniper in the end bounced. I believe it was 11,000 damage in the Challenger. And Dick did a pretty good game as well. So this gives you more of an idea of how you can scout in this thing. Um, and there was quite a bit of wasted potential there. So, could have gone better. Let's have a look at a game in which a lot of damage has been done. And it's going to be interesting to say the least. This is more of a scouting game. Let's have a look at the damage game. If the missile control unit was, um, uh, like, viable as a modification rather than a retrofit, that would be much better for AFEs because then they'd have more options to pick. Instead, you basically have GIMP missiles that you need to buy a 3 million retrofit for just so they can work properly. And, and, and even then, for a lot of missiles, they still don't work as well as they should. Like, most of the missiles in game are like, they have such poor accuracy that you can't hit things on the move with them. And as you saw with my Fox, it took for, and the, the speed made it take forever to get there. And even then, I had basically what was essentially some slightly better missiles than the BMP with a reload time four times as long. The, the CL-13, the Scorpion Castat, the Sabre and the Swingfire reload faster than I do or at the same speed, and their missiles have twice as much damage and 100 or 200 more pen. So it's not exactly in the best um, way right now the foxes. And there used to be the premier spotter of tier 6 we could hit things. Now, not really. Like, the Sabre's missiles still don't work, so it's basically down to whoever's mad enough to take a fox now, or anybody who wants to take a scorpion cache death that has slightly less free range in camo, but has a no man turret, so they can just go hold down in a what is essentially a fucking scout vehicle, because reasons. I mean, this is pretty fun as a spotter as well, but it has, its top speed is absolute shit, so you can't get away from people, like, an MBT can chase me down, and if a light tank like a Buford decides to go for me, there's nothing I can really do against him. Let me get spotted. No, I'm not going I'm gonna get shot from over there, maybe. Let's see if we can. No, okay. Let's see if we can sit down here. I don't think a missile would have hit that guy, even even if I fired early. This guy, however. Yeah, this team's done for, let's go. Let's get the fuck out of here. TD, you drowned. Congratulations, TD, how did you drown? Identify. Just 
just keep can't, just just keep changing positions. There he is. He's gonna start backing out the cover now. Uh, can we get those tele telescopic lenses? Now those are missiles that hurt, but even then these could probably do the buff to be honest. Well, uh, nerf to be honest. Let's get out. Just get the fuck out of here. This is done for completely. Ooh. And then we can see if we can missile this uh VBR maybe. No. He's down. That was very close. No Enemy destroyed. Hey, how's it killed to be in, to be to, to get killed by another scout bitch? Okay, we need to go for the BMD4 next. Probably should be able to come in and do that. There we go. Go by the cannon. Please don't hit me. Be able to hit the stingray. <sighs> Jesus. He was hit by a HE round for that. For that BMD. God damn it. This is awkward. He's slowly coming at me, he's gonna fire. Hey Aldia, how's it going? Is he hampering. Okay, is he going through the. Okay, no, he's still over there for some. What are you doing? Back up, reload. Identify target. Great. Just fucking fantastic. One. Just aim for the turret top. Identify. Oh, fucking bimps coming for me now. I, 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 okay, I'm, I, I think he's using the APS. I think he is. I fucking. Got that missile tracer. Rage, 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 rage. Lots of rage. Bitch! Get at me. Oh, fuck Leopard. <laughs> I did 7,295 though, like, what more do you expect me to do? And I almost killed that BMP as well. I don't think he properly thought out what he was doing, and if he had used a missile, probably would have killed me. But, yeah, like... Kind of BMP there. Yeah. That. Oh. Like, our team folded so badly on that end. Like, you saw me hitting the roof of that leopard. Like, I'm pretty sure I would have been able to take out that leopard eventually. And that BMP fucked up. So, if I had more time, maybe I could probably kill both of them. But, shit happens. Yeah. 
Now the BMP is using missiles. Congratulations. Ugh. Jesus. Jesus Christ, that's stick. Yeah, and in the end, do you know how much I get out of it? 225,000 credits. Is that a lot? No. I I did, okay. I did more than 20% of the damage of my team. But I'm running on a massive booster as well. Like like I have I have a fucking I have a premium account, which is 50%. I have a 120. Okay, okay. I, I, I have, I have a 30 percent credit bonus, and I get fuck all for that. Like, I don't know. Yeah, game could have gone better, I guess, but it happens, and it has been some of a struggle to get good games in this with the rush B meta going on, which means even as a slow scout such as this, getting left behind and doing enough to properly how this plays is can actually be difficult but it's shone through and it's taken a while to get these games but all of them were worth it they were good top of the team in most cases pretty damn decent do i recommend this of course it's no vbl in great it's not as overpowered it's no weasel with the unmanned turret or the td play style this is a a balanced scout um the missiles, they do hurt, yes, but in the end, they should. They're, they they, they can be difficult, they can be hard to control, um, so it works out in the end. I guess they could do a little bit of a damage nerf, maybe, but for now, I don't really feel any reason to complain about it, other than the top speed. 65 needs to be more, well, 62, needs to be more like 75-ish, maybe 80, so it can outrun MVTs to the same tier, which can happen. But this is pretty decent for all game modes. In PvE, the spotting and the high damage missiles will help. Same for Glops, and in PvP, of course, Scout Meta. It's a thing. I hope you enjoyed the review anyway, guys. Um, I could always say like and subscribe, leave a comment below. I don't really get much comments these days. Weird. Oh well. And if you'd like to personally support me, get a plane ticket to see my wife in July in the US. There is a donation link below, and trust me, every single penny helps. So for now, I'll see you all for the Centaur 105 review due on Wednesday, and take care everyone, and I'll see you all next time.